So, so far, all the work we've done has been working with quantitative data. Now we're going to look at some tests that involve categorical data. The first one is goodness of fit, and it's for a single categorical data. And with this type of problem, you're seeing if the data, the distribution of the data agrees with some assumed distribution. So we have 60 people were asked whether they prefer vanilla chocolate or strawberry ice cream. Results are shown in the table below. All the flavors equally popular. So we have a total of 60. So if they are equally popular, then we would expect to have about the same amount for each. So we need to find the expected value. So if the assumed distribution is true, what would we expect this distribution to look like? And to get the expected values, we take n times p. In this case, all the probabilities are the same. So it's 60 times 1 third which gives us 20. So our expected in each case is 20. So we set this up slightly differently. Our null hypothesis, we still give the probabilities or what we assume the distribution to be but we do not have to define the parameters. So our assumed distribution is that the pro proportion of vanilla equals the proportion of chocolate equals the proportion of strawberry, which is one-third. Now the alternative you can give in words. And the alternative would be at least one p sub i, i just indicating one of the probabilities, is not as stated. And if you want, you could say it's not one-third. Now the test statistic, and for both types of pro problems with categorical variables, the test statistic is the same. It's a chi-squared statistic. The formula is the sum of observed minus expected squared over expected. So we have 28 minus 20 squared over 20 plus 23 minus 20 squared over 20, plus 9 minus 20 squared over 20. Now when we work each of these out, first one is 3.2, second one is 0 0.45, and third one is 6.05. When we add them together, we get 9.70. So this is our test statistic for this problem. Now for the p-value, what's nice with all of these problems, it's always a right tail test. P value is chi squared CDF, the test statistic, 999. And again, you need degrees of freedom. In this case, degrees of freedom equals the number of categories minus 1. We have three categories, so we have three minus one or two.
So second vars, number eight. On some of your calculators, it might be number seven. Lower is 9.70. Upper is 999. Degrees of freedom is two. And we have 0 .00783. is our p-value. So now our conclusion in context. p-value smaller than any reasonable significance level so reject the h sub 0 and we find strong evidence that the flavors are not equally popular. Now we can look at it and we can see the one that contributes the most to the test statistic or the one that has the largest difference from the expected is the strawberry. That's a 6.05. So strawberry contributes most to the chi-squared statistic. Okay, now this was one where we were looking for equal probability. So our expected values were all the same. We took the total and multiplied by the probability of one-third. Now, sometimes the probabilities are going to be different for the different categories. So studies in genetics often involve chi-square tests. For one gene, we expect 25% of the people to have variant AA, 25% to have variant BB, and 50% to have variant AB. Observed counts of the three variants in one sample are shown. Do these counts provide evidence that the stated proportions are not right? So first thing we need to do is get our total. And if we add these up, we have a total of 570. We need to get the expected values. And the expected value is n times p sub i. So in the first case, it's 570 times 0.25, which gives us 142.5. The second case, it's 570 times 0.25, because those are the probabilities or the percentages we were given which is also 142.5. And in the third case, it's 142.5. It's 570 times 0.50, which is 285. And we see the first one is pretty close. 
The other two, they're a little far away. So let's see how this affects the chi-squared. So our null hypothesis is that the probability for AA is 0.25. The proportion for BB is 0.25. And the proportion for AB is 0.50. The alternative is at least One P sub I is not as stated. So when we go to get the test statistic, it's chi squared equals the sum of observed minus expected squared over expected. So we have 142 minus 142.5 squared over 142.5 plus 121 minus 142.5 squared over 142.5 plus 307 minus 285 squared over 285. And if we work out the individuals, first one, there's not much difference at all. So we have 0 0.00175 plus 3 3.24386 plus 1.69825. Even though the difference is slightly higher than in the second one, we're dividing by a higher number. So the contribution is less. This gives us 4.94386. So our p-value. Chi square CDF of 4.94386999. And again, it's two degrees of freedom because we have three categories, and three minus one is two. This gives us 0 0.0844. So now p-value is not less than 0 0.05, the common significance level. So we do not reject H sub zero. These data do not contradict by hypothesized proportions for these three gene variants. 
Another way we could word this, going back to the question asked, we're asked, do these counts provide evidence that the stated proportions are not right? For this part, we could say there is insufficient evidence to say that the stated proportions are not right. So this is what you do if you have a single categorical variable.